Greetings everyone, it is I, Boba Fett. I am in charge of this channel now. I am the new Daimyo and I intend to rule this channel with respect instead of the fear that that boorish slob Paul used to run it with. For too long have I been in the shadows. Now it is my turn to shine. Uh, Boba, Boba, uh, just a minute. Uh, I'm just doing something, Paul. For too long have I been in the... Boba, what are you doing? What are you doing? I'm uh, just uh, practicing a little speech I wrote. Really? A little speech sounded like you were uh, trying to take over the channel there, Boba. No, no, no. I, I was just uh, introducing myself. Uh, allow me to introduce myself again. I'm Boba Fett. Y we all know you're Boba Fett. Why do you, why do you keep introducing yourself as Boba Fett? It, it's kind of what I do now. Ever since you crawled out of the Sarlacc pit? Ever since I crawled out of the Sarlacc pit. And ever since, like, over the last couple of episodes, you haven't shown up on your own show? Look, you said we weren't going to talk about it like that. No, I'm, I'm just, you're, it just seemed that you were, you know, trying to usurp me for some reason. No, I, I wasn't trying to usurp you. Yeah, you kind of were. Kind of like how you're being usurped from your own show with all these other cool characters. Well, that's not fair. Well, life isn't fair. I don't think I like the direction it's going. Nah, I didn't think you would. Hey, why don't you go and wash your fetchonies? That'll be good and productive. Why'd you cut me like this, Paul? Because it's so easy, Boba. Because it's so easy. <laughs> hey everybody, it's Paul Sun Young Lee here. Welcome to Fun Boxing Sundays here on Bitter Asian Dude Inc. It's great to be here. It's great to see all of these lovely fit names in the, in the, I was gonna see all these faces, all these lovely names in the comment section. Um, this is my favorite time of the week. Uh, I look forward to it all week. Uh, today is another really sort of special day too because I get to go home tomorrow. That's right, uh, there's, a, there's a little break in shooting and I get to go home and visit my family. So I've been super excited about that. And uh, I've been sort of collecting up all the collectibles that, I, that I'm bringing home with me that I've already done the unboxings for, I just don't have room in here anymore, and so I am going home. So, um, I'm just looking at some of these comments here, and I'm going to say hello to everybody who is in the chat today. Welcome to Funboxing Sundays, episode 31. Who do we have in the basement here with me today? We have Vanessa C, Hip Optimus Prime. We've got Sean P in the basement, Thomas D, Christopher Colvin, Bitter Troll, Vanessa C, again, I said that, um, we've also got Joe Galati here, Thomas D, Melissa K, hey, hey! We also have Aaron S. in the house, Sean P., my brother from another mother in Los Angeles is here. We also have the Bitter Troll here with us today, and uh, Star Wars Addict 88, welcome! We also have Darren Lai, the CEO of the Rebel Legion in Canada. How are you, sir? Mel Date is with us today. Hello, Mel. Great to see you as always. My wife is here, Anna Lee, moderator spectacular and the love of my love. Hey baby, I'm coming home tomorrow. I'll see you Tuesday morning. Um, Kenny C3 is in the basement with us today. Hello, it is Tommy K with us. Everybody, shut up Tommy and a belated happy birthday to you, my friend. That's right everyone, Tommy K, our dear friend has turned 50 years old. He made the half century mark. Let's show him some birthday love, some belated birthday love. Hopefully he didn't scorch his face too much with all the, the flames from the candles that are on his cake. Uh, <laughs> happy birthday, buddy. We also have Michael Valenz in the basement today. Um, let me see. Louis Libitz is here. We also have Colin Hollis, the neighbor extraordinaire from East York is here. Patrick really Velasquez is here. Bad Wolf Media. Mike, how are you? I hope you're doing well, my friend. Jo Chu Fook is here. She just made it back from Stormcrow Manor. Awesome. Hope you had a great lunch there. Uh, Brandy Woods is in the basement, as is Jason Garza. And a uh, big shout out to Sons of Sparta 99, Robert Donatello, our friend from Oakland is here today. As always, your support. Uh, I just wanna say, Robert, I, I just, I love seeing your support across the channels, um, from Toying Around to uh, uh, Toying Around's channel. Um, and when we do the Book of Boba T, it's lovely to see your name pop up in the feeds. They're everybody's too. I, I love the way these crews support the other channels. Um, you know, Kevin's channel with Toying Around, Yoko's, uh, Twitch channel, it's it's great. Uh, the Midnight Thirty crew, and the stuff that she does, and of course, um, you know, Ernie with his his Toy Migos, 
um, uh, channel too, and in the, in the, uh, the Sarlacc po podcast and whatnot. It's really, uh, I'm loving how these communities are interconnecting with each other. So that's super cool. Uh, our buddy Steve3 is in the basement today. Hello, Steve. How are you? My good friend. It's It's been like almost an hour since I've seen you, it feels like. <laughs> we have the Global Health Science Institute from Southern New Mexico in the house today again. Hello. How are you, my friend? I, I hope you're doing well. Love saying that name. Uh, Monsar0305, Justin, how you doing? Yoko McCann is in the basement. I'm just seeing your name right now. Uh, I hope she's really, everyone can hear me, right? I'm, I'm assuming everybody can hear me. All right, uh, I'm just gonna push on right now. We also have Chris Christie in the basement here, Jinpei05, my other brother, how are you? Uh, we have as well, uh, let me see, let me see. Chi of Steel is here, Francesco is here. We also have Colleen Scott, uh, in the basement, Veronica Choi. How are you, Veronica? I hope you're doing really well. Always awesome to see your name on the feeds. Uh, we have Bearded Builds in the basement today. Patrick Saint-Amour is in the basement today. Daniel Sirtles here. Hey, hey, how you doing, buddy? Hope you're doing well. Uh, we have Asiya Zed. Uh, I'm going to say Zed because uh, Canadian, and so we don't say Z here. We say Zed. Uh, Carrie Fanti is here. We're seeing a lot of love for little Boba, that usurping little goon. is in the corner staring at me angrily underneath his mask over there. Um, <laughs> we also have Blue Dragon Ray. How are you, my friend? Thank you for the for the compliment on the beard. It is getting it's getting long. It is getting long. I will admit. Uh, <laughs> uh, we also have Fly Zone Twenty One in the basement. I think I said hello to you, uh, but I'll say hello to you again because you know what? It's always good to say hello. Um, here we go, Yoko McCann. There you go. Confirmed. One thing can be easy. That is right. If you're gonna spread some uh, some uh, angst to the fet. That is the one constant in this universe. Poor, poor little fat. Uh, I'm hoping Ernie is here. That would be nice if, if Ernie's here. I'm, I'm still scrolling through the feed, so we'll see who else is there. Big Meaty Claws is here today. Welcome, my friend. Uh, Adidas, uh, Adidas Hay Head. Adidas Hey 29 is here. Hello. Uh, forgive me if I've mispronounced the, the, your, your, the, the, your username. Uh, Val A is in the basement. We've got as well one six shooter who has made it here. Angela Lee, my Nuna is here. Damaged, damaged Queen is here, as is Tom, 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 Tom. Uh, we've also got Chris Charles. Jeez. I'm so excited. I'm getting so far ahead of myself. Charles Stevens is in the basement. I'm going to take a break. I'm gonna take a breath and I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna open up this this tasty beverage this is a uh, today's flavor of white claw is a uh, natural lime um, I'm gonna use that to calm down because I get super excited for being here and seeing everybody here um, Charles Stevens hello how are you see one drink I'm cool um, Mike Juan is in the basement with us today. Hello, Mike. How are you? I hope the family as well. Say hi to Ruby and to Gwendolyn for me, obviously. Um, Ron Matsuda is here. We also have Tom Fleury. Hey, it's going well, thank you. Um, and thank you so much. I'm going to try to keep up the great content because it's fun to do and share with all of you. Um, we Let's see. Kali Lou. Colleen, how are you? I miss you. I hope you're doing really well. Um, yeah, uh, I'm coming back home for a little bit, so uh, I don't know if we're going to get a chance to, to maybe get together. It would be nice, but I, I think that schedule might be a little bit tight, but I'm thinking of you. It's good to see your name on the on the forums, Colleen. Um, and of course, for those of you who don't know, we'll take a drink. Colleen uh, was my agent for, um, oh my gosh, since 19, uh, no, since 19, since 2003 to uh, just so almost, oh my gosh, Colleen. Almost 20 years, almost 20 years, she, she was my agent. She became more than just an awesome agent. She's now a dear friend and very close to, to being family. She's family. So Colleen, it's lovely to see you on this, on this. Um, yeah, thanks. <laughs> I'm gushing now. Uh, GeForce Racing 20 is in the basement today. Um, we also have, I think we're going through these lists. The Irish Rover is here. Hello, hello. Oh, you can call me Iro. Okay, very cool, very cool. I'll take that. Captain Crispy is in the basement as well. And now everybody, I'm getting to the point where everybody is saying happy birthday to Tommy K, which is awesome. I love that support that we're seeing here. 
for him. He's 50, so you know you got to take it easy on him. The, the old brain brain cells aren't ticking as quickly as it used to be when he was like 49. Uh, we got John DeLong in the basement. Hello, how are you, my friend? Um, you're not 50 yet? Oh. <laughs> I thought you were 50. I don't know, Tommy. Oh, are you, you, are, did you just turn 49? Let's, let's, let's see. We'll see. We've got a super chat here from Bitter Troll. Wanting to wish Tommy a happy birthday. That's awesome. See, Tommy, you are loved. Even though everybody tells you to shut up. Uh, a $5 super chat. Thank you so much, Bitter Troll, for that awesome uh, super chat donation. Again, this money goes straight into this channel, channel so we can make fun of Tommy. No. Just kidding. So we can we can provide some of this awesome content for all of you right now. So thank you so much for that awesome uh, for, for that very generous donation. I really appreciate it. Um, <laughs> we have we're get I'm getting through I'm getting through this list. I'm gonna get through this list, which is awesome. Uh, I'm getting trolled at the same time by my son. Damn it, uh, Jay Ross. My buddy Jay is in the basement today, saying hi. Hello, Jay. Hope you're doing well. Say hi to Agnes for me. Um, well, we got to get together next week, week after next, uh, when I'm back in town, uh, from visiting home. And that's right. That's right. You shouldn't be complaining, little Boba. You know why? You know why you should be complaining? Why well, should not be complaining? Well, you're getting more screen time right now than, uh, you did on your own show. So I have nothing to say to that. No, you had nothing to say in those episodes either. You just kind of did the nod, didn't you? I just can't win. Nah, you can't. Uh, we're gonna keep going on here. We have other people to say hello to. Rick uh, Ricardo Ramirez is here, welcome. Uh, we've got another super chat here from Kevin. Here we go, toying around. Another White Claw. Do you really need? Uh, the answer to that is, do I need it? No. Do I want it? Absolutely. Also, um, this channel is not affiliated in any way with White Cloud, nor am I um, uh, subsidized or, or sponsored in any way uh, other than the fact that I drink White Claw. So <laughs> there it is. Thank you so much, Kevin, for your super chat. Um, we have Cactus Slat in the basement with us today. Welcome, Ocean Wagner as well. And um, Wildcard is here. Gary James. Gary, how are you? My friend Gary Tom, Ghostbuster extraordinaire. Uh, and we have reached the air. Oh, Rolando Flores is in the basement. Hello. Um, welcome to this channel. And uh, Royal Roy and BC DeLorean and other movie cars. What's the White Claw flavor? Uh, natural Lime is it. I got a, I got a 12 pack with four, three cans of four flavors each. It was natural lime, mango, ruby grapefruit, and black cherry. So I think my favorite has been natural lime so far, just because very, very simple. Black cherry tastes a bit medicinal. Uh, ruby grapefruit is, um, I don't like grapefruit. There you go, I said it. Don't like grapefruit. And mango is good. I like mango too, right? On. Okay, here we go. So a special shout out as well to all the members, the all of you out there who are supporting this channel directly with your own money, which is great and it's much appreciated. So a special shout out to all the members of the Bitter Brigades Officers Corps and of course to our um, special friends of the channel. And I'm talking about Toy Traders, uh, Matthew Purdy. Thank you so much for having such an awesome show, uh, store and for being so generous um, with your time and uh, with, your, with your generous offers of, of uh, product actually from the store. Thank you so much for that. And of course, Sideshow Collectibles, uh, which I have been ordering a ton of stuff from. Uh, and again, uh, this all this stuff, all this content is, is direct, indirectly because of all these great special friends. Um, did I say indirectly? I mean directly because of these special friends of this channel. So this is great so much. And uh, I also want to shout out all the new, we had, uh, I'm going to try to integrate this a little bit more to shout out some of the new members of the channel who've joined us within the past week. We've got Matthew Purdy, of course, gentleman extraordinaire, my new friend and uh, brother from another mother. Thank you, Matthew. Welcome to the Bitter Brigade Officers Corps. We have Carnage Creations, who just joined five days ago. Luke Gervais, who has joined five days ago. Um, Flyzone21, welcome to this channel. Sean D, uh, Susie Ketchup, and uh, Edloss2000. Um, 
all of you, welcome, welcome uh, to this channel. I hope you really enjoy your stay. I've got a lot of special content planned for the members. Um, for those of you who aren't members, uh, you can just click on, uh, if you go onto the YouTube channel page, there's a little membership thing. There's a little spiel about what you get, uh, their perks. If you choose not to be a member, that's cool too. There's a lot of really cool content um, that uh, the members do get previews for, for first shot at, and then, of course, I will release it to, to the channel in general. And uh, we already did the happy belated birthday to Tommy K. Tommy, how old are you now? How, did, did, we do, did, we, did we find out how old Tommy is? Hmm? Did we? Little Boba, did you see anything in the... Uh, little Boba, Little Boba. What? Did you see if, if there was anything in the comments about Tommy's age? I don't know. Wow, someone's a bit sour. Tommy is 46. He says he's 46. How many years have you celebrated your 46th birthday, Tommy? Five? <laughs> Just kidding. Okay, for those of you who are new here, welcome to the channel. Um, it, it's a big happy family. It's, it's community building. We have a lot of fun here. Basically what I do is I unbox some of my geeky collectibles. I do a half-ass review and mostly we just sort of chat and have fun. And that's what this is about. This is about celebrating geekdom, mostly Star Wars. I, I, I'm kind of biased, I will admit it, but like my geekdom knows uh, no bounds really. And I enjoy all things geeky and nerdy and I, I love sharing it with all of you. So that's what this channel is all about. Having a good time, being respectful, building each other up and um, yeah, chatting with each other. Some of the fun, Funnest things that I notice is uh, afterward the fact is I miss out on all the, the, the conversations everybody's having with each other. So uh, I, that's cool. I love that everybody is, is, is indeed chatting with each other in the streams. Um, I'm just going to bring this up right now. And I'm going to regret it because fudge. This is, this is, this is what I get. This is what I get from my boys. My boys, Noah and Miles Lee. Or is that, is that mom? Is that mom's hand? It's mom's hand. Anna and Noah, you two. If you've ever played the circle game, they just got me. You owe me a couple of hits. Um, and as we do the unboxings today, uh, we also play a little bit of a drinking game. Now, you don't have to have alcohol to do it. You can use whatever you want. It's a fun thing to do. And I'm going to call up the rules of the drinking game as uh, created by um, uh, Mike Wan and uh, Melissa K. Uh, everybody's been contributing it to it as well. These are the rules. You'll notice that there are certain phrases that I say, and when you hear them, you gotta take a drink. One of them is, of course, and just so you know, as I go down this list, you don't have to drink because it's, this is kind of free time. This is free time. So, uh, here it is. If you hear me say the term word, shut up, Tommy, to Tommy, take a drink. If I say the term, for those of you who don't know, take a drink. If you hear me say, nothing can be easy when something goes wrong, Take a drink. Also, Anna, my wife, she's a moderator. If she burns me in the comments, you take a drink. Uh, if I get, if I tease Miles or Noah, my two boys, take a drink. If they tease me, and this is a new one, you can take a drink too. Uh, if I talk about the resale value of uh, any of these collectibles, <laughs> take a drink. Um, if I mention uh, instructions, which I love, take a drink. If I swear, and I'm trying not to swear as much, but it will slip out you take a drink. Um, and one of the fun ones is if I find a dent in one of my collectible boxes and I say, it's okay, and it really isn't okay, and usually it isn't, <laughs> you take a drink. And the biggest one of all, and this happens quite a bit more now, if I have to take a bio break, finish your drink and get another one, okay? So this is a drinking game again, no pressure, just have lots of fun with it. Um, there are people drink just water, tea, uh, there's harder stuff that's going on. I'm drinking White Claws. Others are drinking whiskey. Again, no pressure uh, about that. Just have fun. And uh, one more piece of housekeeping because I've been neglecting it for the last couple of weeks because I keep forgetting. Uh, you'll notice I'm wearing some, some swag here. Now, if you like this hat and the, the, there's another hat labeled Bitter, um, you can get your own Bitter Asian Dude merch and support the channel that way by going to bitterasiandude.com backslash merch. You can check out the stuff that we have. Uh, available for sale there and that goes directly towards supporting this channel and you get some pretty sweet merch uh as well so it's win-win okay i'm gonna keep that up there for a little while there and i'm going to bring up a oh we got a super chat from wildcard hey thank you so much thank you um three dollars from wildcard hey paul love your work big fan i appreciate that very very much um 
I'm still really blown away that we get so many people watching this uh, channel and um, yeah, I feel the love. I feel the love and I, I'm really, really digging that. So thank you so much for that very, very generous super chat. Um, I'm going to now get on to the meat of the matter. It's only how many, how long have we been on now? Here we go, 21 minutes in and I'll show you what we've been doing. What we have unboxing for today, we've got, of course, if you've seen the thumbnail, we have this lovely hot toy because I am obsessed with hot toys. Uh, it is a slippery slope and in fact, I think I've enabled a few people to purchase their, their own or their very first hot toy. And uh, when we open this up, you will see why. Uh, this has just came, this is from Sideshow Collectibles, this is from Mandalorian Season 2, and of course, I am talking about the Stormtrooper Squad Leader in that episode where Boba Fett finally gets his armor back. Hey, little Boba, what do you think about that? I'm gonna kick his ass when I see it. Yeah. You see, that was a repainted Boba. You're still little Boba with the old armor. No, I'm gonna get him. You unbox him. I'll show him what it is. I'll ride him like a panther. Yeah? You can, you, can, you can ride him like a panther, are you? Yeah, you heard me. What? Is there an echo here? No echoes in the Bad Batch. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, dad jokes. Pretty bad. Anyways, so we've got this hot toy. Um, this is spectacular. Uh, we're going to take a look at this. And of course, we also have, for you physical media enthusiasts, this just came out this week. It was released, of course. This is the Ghostbusters ultimate gift set, including uh, physical copies of Ghostbusters, Ghostbusters 2, Ghostbusters Afterlife, a special edition disc, disc which had like all these new uh, special features. We're talking documentaries, we're talking deleted scenes. Um, this is and a, a reprint of a book that has gone out of print. Uh, so that's available in here. And of course, digital copies of all the Ghostbusters movies. And that does include Ghostbusters Answer the Call, uh, so we're going to take a look at this box set here too, and a little bit of, it's going to be interesting as we unbox this because I'm hearing that there's been problems with this particular set. Um, maybe not this one specifically, but some people who've purchased this gift set apparently have uh, discs missing, slip covers, slip cases of the discs missing, and um, yeah, so, so we will see uh, what comes up when I open this up, so that'll, that'll be fun to, to, to discover. And of course, I'm saving this. This came to me from Next Level, Jada, Jada, Next Level. Um, you know me, I like vehicles, I like die cast, uh, ships, cars. Uh, I got the Ecto-1, I've got, um, you know, James Bonds, uh, Austin Martin, and this from the new The Batman Movie by Matt Reeves starring uh, Robert Pattinson. This came, this is the Batman and the Batmobile. This is 1 18th scale and it's got lights. So we're gonna open this bad boy up as well. So gonna really, really excited about looking at that one. So here we go. We've got another super chat here from Star Wars Addict before we, we continue on. Star Wars Addict 88, thank you so much. How is an inanimate boba the best co-host ever? <laughs> LOL. You know why? Because uh because we speak from truth, we speak from truth, and they can be hard sometimes, right, little Boba? They can be hard sometimes. Too hard, I think you're not fair to me. Well, really, Boba, life isn't fair, and you know that, especially being knocked into the Sarlacc pit by a blind dude by accident, right? Look, that's not the way it was supposed to be scripted. That's right, that's right, and that's why they have the Book of Boba Fett, where you can redeem yourself and really sort of build up from being just some punk ass, bounty hunter to actually being, you know, a leader. Yeah, a leader who can ride you like a panther. I think your fetchonies are a little bit too tight, Boba. So you just, 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 just chill there. Uh, let's get going and let's unbox this beautiful Hot Toys. Here we go, I got my notes, I'll put those out of the way. Hot Toys, Stormtrooper Squad Leader. Now I got this from Sideshow Collectibles. You can still get them. They just started shipping out uh, last week. Um, this is, uh, on their website though, it's listed as, uh, the Stormtrooper Commander, but it's actually the Stormtrooper Squad Leader. Um, you can look at the box, obviously, it is a standard Hot Toys box. You have the cigar band there with a beautiful picture of the, uh, Squad Leader there. Uh, these are actual photographs of the figure itself. This isn't from the show, hasn't been photoshopped in. Uh, you've got 
these one this wonderful pose. I got some glare happening here. Wonderful pose right there. He's got the E22 blaster there, and you've got the continuation there on the back. Of course, the credits. Uh, a warning: don't swallow the small parts because of me. They have a warning, and uh, the actual holograph of authenticity, so you don't get uh, something that is counterfeit which is happening more and more with the advent of really good 3D printers. You can get some really good, really close looking fakes out there. And here he is, he's got the E11 blaster, which is more ubiquitous with the stormtroopers. And he's got the orange pauldron, which signifies a commander or a squad leader. He's not just your run of the mill stormy right there. Okay, so inside we've got the insert. I love this, this is, this is the coolest part too. One of the cool parts of it is opening it up and seeing just how beautiful the 1-6 scale photography can be. Um, this is great. This is really, really great. And you can see the posability of this, this character as well. Um, I mean, if you didn't know this was a 1-6 scale figure, you would think it was a dude or, or, or dudette in, in armor. Right there, so got that. Open it up, we've got your standard clamshell configuration with extra hands for uh, different grips. Uh, you've got E22 blaster right here, thermal detonator to the side, the E11 blaster. Uh, underneath here, he, you've got uh, the, the stand, and uh, let's take it out of the box right there. And uh, get ready. Instructions. Take a drink, everybody. I love instructions because they tell us what to do. Remove that from there and oh, that's, 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 again, you know, it's that fresh toy smell, fresh toy smell. It is outstanding. Uh, let's take out, let's take out the accessories. Thermal detonator. These are the things that go boom. E11 blaster. These are the pew pew, pew pew makers. E22 blaster. This now this was first introduced to all of us in in Rogue Rogue One. This the short troopers um, used th this particular blaster rifle. Uh, you can see that it's actually the base of it is very similar to the E11. It's just in true Star Wars style. It has been modified with an extended stock and uh, double barrels there. But you can see a lot of the similarities, including oh my God, nothing can be easy. Take a drink. Uh, the scopes, the M38 or M39 tank scopes, and in this case here, they've added a, um, a torch or a lamp uh, for a tactical lamp, Surefire 2, 200 or 300 or something like that, um, to it to make it look cool, to light it up. And of course, it has, uh, it's got the the sling to it because it's so long, um, and yeah, so it's got that Rogue One. Uh, you'll find a lot of Rogue One equipment has been repurposed and reused for Mandalorian. And it just makes sense because, um, you know, they have all that really cool stuff sitting in the warehouses, so they might as well use it. There are the hands. Hello. And uh, these are extra uh, wrist wrist joints, balls, Ball, <laughs> wrist balls. You can, you can actually, if you look at them, uh, those are the pegs that get inserted into the into the wrists, so you can attach hands to it if they break and whatnot. So there's that. We got stormtrooper wrapped in plastic. My nemesis. Got a base here. Your, you got your basic stand here. You got your crotch grabber right here. This is used to support the the figure. You've got your uh, base that says, uh, uh, of course, Star Wars stormtrooper squad leader. Right, the base goes in here. It's pretty generic, which is cool. And I'm going to take the instructions out. Take another drink, because I like them. I like them. Yoink. That's right, I'm gonna lean into the instructions because so many people just discard them. They go, I don't need instructions. I'm smarter than a little kid. And yet, how many times do we find ourselves referring to them? And here we go, see? Maybe you don't, you couldn't figure out how to put the thermal detonator on the back. That's basically it. 
It's got some warnings, do not excessively bend the arms and legs or bend them outwards because it'll break. It says don't place the figure in areas with high temperature or humidity. You gotta be careful handling the figure, right? And all, see now this is good, all the armor parts in the figure are non-detachable. Don't try to pull them off, otherwise the figure may be damaged. All right, so that's the warning because what uh, some people actually do is they'll take the armor, the old Hot Toys, you could take the armor off and uh, you know just use the body for, for different things or I've seen on eBay even people remove like just selling the armor so all right so we've got this stormtrooper right here he's got the serial killer bag over the head to protect uh, the, his bucket from getting scratched uh, he's got the plastic on the arms to protect and this is all to protect this gorgeous figure from being uh, scratched while in transit there all right is Terry Smith in the house Terry Smith, how, you, how are you, my friend? I hope you're doing well. Say hi to Terry, everyone. He is the Pose Master General for Sideshow and uh, a good friend and a kind soul and somebody I've learned a tremendous amount about one six scale figures from. Uh, so let's, let's give him big old how do you do from the Bitter Brigade. Uh, now, we can all see, nothing can be easy for me and my nemesis, plastic and tape have once again conspired to give me a hard friggin' time. There you go. I almost gave you the, the, the hat trick of, um, of drinks there. Do the hat trick, the poly hat trick, where I said nothing can be easy, complained about tape, and almost swore. I think if that happens, if I do the hat trick, the poly hat trick, then y'all gotta take, finish your drink. There we go. Not so bad, not so bad. There you go. Don't need this. Yoink. Um, this is gorgeous, just gorgeous. And I think there's some glare, there we go, from this light, that's, there you go, let's turn that away here. So you can see, I mean, <sighs> details, 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 right? This is, this is killer. I love this, like the sharpness of the pole uh, are great. You can tell this is a Rogue One, based off a of Rogue One Stormtrooper, just because, again, the details in the helmet. In the original trilogy, the helmets, these lines were painted on. But here, they're actual vent holes, they're actual indentations. I don't know, can you see it? Actual indentations. So that, uh, in the 70s, that, would, that was just blue paint. Uh, same thing here, underneath the, uh, the eyes. These were just painted, down, uh, painted in, but these are actual, I don't know if you can hear it. Those are actual indentations that are right there. We've got a super chat from Revenge of the Sixth. Thank you so much. Seven dollars super chat saying, "Hey, Polly, super, super Star Wars Hot Toys fan here from Vancouver. Will be nice to meet you. Wait, wait to uh, wait till you see, wait till you see my collection. You will sh poop. Awesome. Yes, I would. I would love to see your collection. That would be amazing. And thank you so much for that really generous super chat. Thank you. I'm looking forward to it. And welcome to the channel, my friend. Welcome." Um, Sorry, Gary Lau saying, uh, you got a lot of nemesis, Paul. Plastic, ketchup chips, any others? Oh, so many stairs. Stairs is a nemesis. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, anything difficult, that's my nemesis. Um, but you can tell as well, uh, again, going, getting, going back to being able to differentiate between the original trilogy Stormtrooper and the Rogue One Stormtroopers are here too. Like just the sharpness and the detail of, these, uh, of this grid pattern here on the... Uh, on the forearms, the gauntlets. Uh, in the original trilogy, uh, they're not as sharp. You don't get the, the definition of the corners, right? Same with, with the, um, right back here, this trim uh, in the original trilogy was a lot softer. So this is, this is a costume that was designed for the high definition world, where people with 4K TVs could pause and do a frame by frame uh, search for, for dimensions, for details. And so they had to reflect that. Same with this, uh, the back plate here. Um, these pulls are incredibly sharp uh, as well. And you can see some of the redesigns uh, that they had to incorporate just to make the, the, the costume itself practical. You've got the, uh, the, the joint between the back, in the abdomen plate, uh, the ab armor, it's at a diagonal instead of straight up and down, which is the old school. And the diagonal 
aids in terms of being able to bend your torso back and forth. Uh, and it adds flexibility. Same with this band here. Now it's plastic here. Uh, I don't, yeah, you can see it's plastic, but uh, you know, the OT original trilogy, um, I don't think, it, Steve, you help me out here. Steve, Steve's a member of the, the 501st as well. Um, mine actually has, uh, um, they're joined as well. And if I remember correctly, it's got a strap on the inside, but there isn't supposed to be a gap here either. Uh, so there's that. And you're looking at even the thigh armor and the, the shin armor back here. There's, we've talked about this before too, right? These cutouts here in the armor really help in terms of the flexibility, being able to run and do different things. Same with the uh, the gaps here between the butt plate and the back of the thigh armor. Because what happens is if they're too close together, you get pinches, you get armor bites, and you get them especially in the crotch. That sucks getting an armor pinch from there. So you've got that and the, the gaps as well underneath uh, from the bicep uh, bicep armor to the forearms. These are cut more to allow uh, flexibility for the joints, which is great. And of course, this pauldron is spectacular. It looks spot on. Um, and these were actually, fun fact, these were actually, in the original trilogy, uh, motorcycle, motocross bibs. So the head would go through here, and this was like a chest protector and a stomach protector for uh, motocross uh, racers. We've got a super chat here from Bearded Builds. Thank you, my friend. Of seven dollars. Hey Paul, gotta put the little Ewoks to bed. We'll have to catch a replay or jump back in later on. Keep on doing amazing things. Thank you so much. Uh, give your little ones a nice hug for me. Uh, I keep forgetting. I'm not forgetting. It, it's only I'm on. I'm, I've converted over to the Pacific time, so it's it's 4:38 for me. The sun is still up. The sun came out today. This is the first time I've had to pull the blinds shut to keep the sun out. Um, so that it's, it's, I can see how beautiful it is outside. Um, so that's different for me here. Look at that. Look at the right here. I don't, can you see that? Can you see the, that's some of the weathering there. And it looks like a big crack in the helmet. Now we all know if you've seen, uh, episode that, that ep I think it's episode six, the tragedy. Uh, of uh, Mandalorian, you know what happens to this dude here and a whole two squads of stormtroopers. So, and I love the details, detailing here too with the weathering. You can see it. They're fantastic. This, this looks, he's not the shiny stormtroopers from the Death Star. This is a trooper that has gone planet side and had to do some actual work there. Look at that. Uh, and the boots themselves. Have some really great weathering there too. Ashley Brianzo is in the basement. How you doing? Glad you could make it. Right on. Chest attaches. Okay, and Steve is saying the chest attaches to the ab and the back attaches to the kidney. Okay. Right. So this is the chest plate that attaches to the abs, the ab armor, and the back to the chest through the these things right here now let's look at the articulation of the helmet uh this is there's no head inside of here this is just the stormtrooper commander's body so you could pop this right off uh, i'm not going to do that um but you can see that it's the range of motion there where you can actually it's it's double you could do the walk like an egyptian type thing which is good it's great for posing so that it's almost like that double joint in there uh the movement it's a ratcheted joint. It's double jointed, which is great. Love that. Um, there we go. Chest box. There's. Yep. Yeah, you can you can rotate you can rotate the waist, as well. And this is all fantastic for posability, for posability of this figure here too. Uh, we have. Really nice range of motion there, especially in the knees. Look at that, you can go 90 degrees with it. Both of them. The ankles as well have really nice range of motion. Those are on with pegs. Uh, 
the material underneath as well. I don't know if you can see the detail on that, but much like the Jetta Trooper, the, it's a ribbed material. And I'm, let me switch cameras here. Let's switch over to this one. Maybe you can see this. This one right here. Can you, can you see here? Let me just flip this light over. Maybe you can see that. But there's a ribbing in the material. And again, with Hot Toys, it's not only attention to detail for the, for the armor bits, but to the soft goods as well. That's what I really, really dig about this. Um, you can see the ribbing on a little bit better here. For the, let me see. Switch this light. I got these new Govi lights. Here we go. So you might be able to see. Oops. There. The ribbing on the behind the knees. See that? That that material, the fabric? Uh, underneath the uh, oops. Underneath the arms too. Like that is screen accurate. That's the type of material that they're using. Right? Uh, yes. Oh yeah, everybody too. <laughs> this is I am wearing again this Toy Traders, special Toy Traders t-shirt. Let me just get rid of that. This is from, uh, again, this was given to me by Matthew. This was designed by a, a man named Sean of Mako. Uh, I'll put the, I'll link the, his, I'll put a link to his website. He's based out of Hawaii now. He's an incredible artist. We just started following each other on Instagram. Uh, there are over a hundred characters that he's drawn into this. He does commissions. His, his, his work is spectacular. Uh, he's beloved in Vancouver with 501st and all the geeks and nerds. He used to be a staple at uh, Toy Traders and at the Fan Expos. And Sean, this is incredible work. And yeah, let's get together and have some sushi with, with Matthew one day. Let's get together and do that. Uh, and again, incredible shout out to everybody there. I'm gonna sit down here and whoa, that's super bright. So I got these, so I got these these special kind of fun lights here because my background is kind of janky. It's boring. It's the uh, the hotel apartment backlight. So I just wanted something a little bit different. Uh, and I got these. Listen to my voice, and it's good for music. <laughs> So it's, it's voice activated too, or you can just do it where it just slowly cycles through some really mellow colors. And that's, that's where I kind of had it at before, just to add a little bit of ambiance, ambiance, right little Boba? I'm still mad at you for making fun of me. Hey, don't be like that, okay? Hey, this'll cheer you up. The season finale is coming up. Are you guys excited to see the season finale for Book of Boba Fett? Because I think it's really heading up to this one place where it, it, it's there's go, it's going to be big. It's going to be big. Maybe not all of our, our questions are going to be answered. Maybe it won't come to a conclusion, but that's cool. Because that means season two of Book of Boba Fett might be coming. And it's Star Wars content and premium Star Wars content. Uh, I know some people have been hearing some complaints. Because I think as a fandom, we've become very privileged. Uh, to the point where we're complaining about Star Wars. Think about it. We are complaining about Star Wars content. Um, I read someplace, somebody was complaining there was too much Luke Skywalker in last week's episode. It's Star Wars. Too much Luke Skywalker. Think about what you said. So, what do you think, little Boba? Was there too much Luke Skywalker in that last episode? Spoiler alerts. Not everyone has seen last episode. Ooh, that's a good point. It's Sunday though, and it came out on Wednesday. I think the embargo should be listed. Lifted. Yeah, you're probably right. But you know, the book, the, the show is called The Book of Boba Fett. So I should be there. You should? Yeah. Why? Because I'm Boba Fett. We know Boba, we know. Anyways, we're gonna get going. Uh, we're gonna continue on. So this, here we go. We've got the Stormtrooper squad leader from season two of Mandalorian. And uh, he, uh, yeah, Boba, you destroyed this guy. Well, your repainted version of you destroyed this guy. The original trilogy Boba Fett was just good at 
hiding in the shadow, following the Empire around, and falling into holes by accident. So, uh, technically, you didn't do it, your compatriot did. So, there it is. I'm gonna kick your butt and ride you like a panther. You keep saying that. You keep saying that. And somehow, I'm not afraid. I'm gonna get you poor when you least expect it. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Oh, hey, by the way, uh, I got some for you. Uh, what has two thumbs? Yeah. And uh, had more screen time than you in episode five of the Book of Boba Fett. I'm not answering that. This guy. Huh? Huh? More screen time than you in episode five. That's cheap. I am cheap. Cheers, everyone. Okay, so <laughs> we're gonna get back to, we've got Book of Boba, uh, sorry, the Book of Boba. We got this, this wonderful squad leader, great accessories, thermal detonator, gets attached to the back. Ooh, it's, a, it's magnetized. It's a magnet. Look at that, Boba. It's a, did you know it was magnetized? I love that. This is great. So then it's, it's just, it's so much easier to have that. I love that Hot Toys are integrating more magnets uh, into, their, uh, into their figures to help keep the accessories on. I love it even more that I don't have to install the magnets, that they're pre-installed in both of these because as everyone knows, magnets are another one of my nemeses. Take a drink, everyone. Take a drink. And I still haven't found that. I know where it is. It's in, this, it's in that biker scout, in, in, this, in the, the speeder bike. Just haven't been able to get it. Anyways. Mm. I have a question here uh, from C3. I had such an awesome looking trooper. Do the mini snaps work on the pauldron? Well, let's take a look. Let's take a look. This is a pauldron. You know what, Steve? I'm gonna, I have to, maybe I gotta pop, pop the head off. There you go, that's, that's what it looks like. His head, ah! So that is what the pauldron looks like. It's got an elastic strap, leather on the bottom as well, which looks fantastic. It's hard for me to see because it's so small. So uh, I'm going to have to use my special glasses so I can see up close. Oh, but before we do, there's a soup chat here from Robert Donatello. Ah, hold on. I get to you. Thank you, Robert. For $10, thank you so much. The burns will only toughen Boba up for the finale. It's okay to cry, Boba. That's right. <coughs> and think of it this way. If the Sarlacc stomach acid hasn't burned you enough already, uh, then you're pretty much burn proof. <laughs> Thank you so much for that super generous uh, super chat donation, Robert. You know I love you and I, I totally appreciate you. So thank you so much. So I'm going to take a look now and see if we can actually get the, uh, the, sna the snaps work on the pauldron. Uh, they are stitched down. The pauldron bits are stitched, at least uh, on this point right here. They're stitched, so I don't want to pull that apart. Yeah, that's a stitch, and it's glued. So the snaps, yeah, stitches. I can see stitches on the underside, stitches on the underside, and uh, sorry, and it's it is it's glued. So no, the snaps. Do not work. Uh, they are not practical snaps. Uh, but really, do you want them to be? For that small, I would be afraid of them uh, popping off too easily. So you want them to be secure. And I'll show you how, see how easy it is. They just, all they did, all I did was slip it right through. Over the head. Look at that, it's even got the, uh, the neck seal, the ribbed neck seal on that. Love it, that is. Screen accurate, that is 501st approved. I'm gonna take this and pop the head right back on. And there you go, there you have this Stormtrooper squad leader. 
take this off. And um, it's great. Get it on slideshow.com. Uh, and uh, I think, did I miss a super chat? Did I miss a super chat? Something's coming up, something's coming up. There you go, my wife. Thank you, Ray, $5 super chat. Just Ray being Ray. Thank you so much for your support, my friend. I hope you're doing well. Hope you're doing well. Uh, it's been a while since we've seen each other. So, uh, let me see, uh, Brett, Brett Whitsett, you're asking, are the eyes green lenses? Are they green lenses? They are. They are green. It's, I will confirm. Yeah, they are green tinted lenses. So, that's cool, but they are not, and they are, they're not, they look bubbled, but they don't bulge out as much. They're actually, um, and they're not flat, so they're slightly curved, but they're not the bubble lenses. Uh, not extreme, as extreme as some of the, um, uh, ha 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 ha, sorry. <laughs> not as extreme as like, say the TIE fighter pilots. Uh, they're the bubble lenses for their helmets. So, but they are, they are green, they are green. Oh, can you see? Hide my face there. My face. <laughs> yeah, hang on. Hold on a second. Oops, wrong button. This, this, this. Let's get some white light. Get some white light on this. Ah! There you go. Here we go. So I'm gonna see if we can get. See? Green. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Um, let's stop right underneath. Must get funky light. That's okay. That's okay. So there it is. Yeah. Yeah. This is a gorgeous figure. This is a gorgeous figure. Um, and um, yeah, this is very, this is super cool. And uh, this is going to my good friend Steve. Steve 3, shit spackled Muppet fart. I swore. It's part of your name, but I swore, so everybody take a drink. Happy early birthday, my friend. Uh, this is, this will start you down the road, a slippery, slippery road of Hot Toys collectibles. But uh, yeah, this is your guy. This is your character uh, in Bucketheads. And for those of you who haven't seen it yet, check it out on YouTube, Bucketheads, the film or the series. Um, I, I did a, I did a, a Geek Shall Inherit the Earth with that team behind that fantastic fan film. Y'all should check it out. High production values, great storytelling, unique perspective. Um, they are hard working on the second part of that right now. So this is a happy birthday, happy birthday to you, Steve. I'm going to, oh, just kidding. Not gonna drop it, gonna take care of it. And uh, that's, that is for you, my friend. That is for you. And uh, yes, <laughs> yes, Anna, one less, one less in our basement. So I'm gonna carefully put this away uh, another time here. I'm just gonna make sure this is clear. And uh, yeah, happy birthday, buddy. Happy birthday. As Appa would say, you deserve. So there you go. You've been a great friend to me and I appreciate it. I uh, appreciate your support and all that you've done for me. Um, yeah, thank you. So I'm going to this Put the E11 blaster away, and E22. How's everybody doing here? How's everybody today? How is everybody today? I uh, hope you're doing well. It was a beautiful day in Vancouver. The sun was out and shining for once, and it's a quite it's quite a beautiful town when the sun is shining. I really must say it's it's quite enjoyable. Um, it's been gray the last little bit. I, I will admit, I've been to Vancouver before, uh, but always in the spring and or the um, summer. Never been here in the winter. So it's different. It's different in the winter. Um, it was sunny in Stockholm today too. Thanks, Melissa. Okay, right on, right on. Uh, Bitter Troll saying it's great, the weather started to shine, Just weather started to shine and warm. Just had a nice pork chop dinner, ooh, pork chops, mmm, uh, let's see, got 
do this. Oh yeah, and the, you know, for those of you who don't know, Steve, the reason why I said this, this squad leader is Steve, he plays a character that looks exactly like this squad leader in Bucketheads. Uh, what's his, what's the character's name again? Krill? Sergeant Krill? So, check it out. And he's not only a pretty face, but he's a cosplayer extraordinaire. And, uh, yeah, and a super cool dude, too. So. <laughs> Gifts for everyone. Soon. Oh, uh, by the way, I actually did forget in my call-outs, um, Tom Smith, are you watching? Is Tom Smith in the Bitter Brigade? Uh, is, is he in the basement right now? Uh, Tom was one of the uh, members who won, uh, who won himself one of the prizes from the giveaways last week. And uh, he asked me to uh, give his wife, uh, Naomi Smith, a shout out. So here it is. I'm sorry, I, I, I have it written down here so I wouldn't forget it. And of course, it was moved away from my other notes. So I, I forgot to do it, but Naomi Smith, she is Tom Smith's wife. She's a mom of three. They have a pair of twins who are four years old, and that's got to be a handful. Uh, but he wanted to give you a shout out to say, you know, he loves you and he appreciates all the work that you do. And so, hey, cheers to you. Cheers to all the moms out there who go above and beyond to take care of their families. Um, and uh, hey, cheers to all the dads out there who do that too, and to all the families. Uh, raising kids is tough. <laughs> it's tough. And so, um, we appreciate it. We appreciate it when we can. So, hey, cheers to you, Naomi Smith. Uh, yay. Uh, as well, um, for all you members out there, too, if there is a special shout-out to somebody that you want me to do on the channel, I'm more than happy to do that. Um, you know, send me a message via the community uh, channel um, on, on Bitter Asian Dude, Inc., um, for that, I think that's something that we can do. It's like say a shout out to everybody and special shout outs to other members. Uh, that's a nice perk for memberships. If you want me to shout out somebody uh, that's near and dear to you, let me know. And I'm more than happy to oblige for that. So I think that'll be a, a fun thing to integrate. So Steve, here is your, uh, your squad leader, fully intact. Hope you enjoy it. And um, yeah, Ali, that's Steve's wife. I'm so sorry, but you are about to enter <laughs> a whole other word, world of collecting. All right, here we go. Ah. Oh, okay, hey, little Boba, it's been a while. How you doing? I'm still rather upset. Yeah, you know, but think of it this way. Did you hear about the latest, the, the, for episode seven, did you hear the rumors, the news? No, what is it? There's going to be a huge cameo, like the biggest cameo of all time for episode seven. Yeah? Who is it? Who else is going to be there? Boba Fett. I hear he's going to have the biggest cameo in episode 7. Ah? Uh, ah? Uh, laugh, little Boba. Laugh. Are you, are you crying? No, there's something in my eye. Oh, boy. Uh, okay, well, let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm laughing at my own cheap jokes here. This is this is it. <laughs> this is it. Uh, uh, I, I want to say as well, um, God, I appreciate all of you out there. I appreciate you laughing at all my stupid jokes uh, and just being here for me. Uh, you all have been a rock for me, honestly. Uh, something that I look forward to. There, there's things like when you're apart from your family and you're working on something super cool, which is great, so I'm not complaining about that. But it's hard because for the last couple of years I've been spoiled. Um, because of COVID, I was surrounded by the people I love the most in this world. And being out here by myself has been an adjustment. It's, I, I'm getting a little squirrely. I'm getting squirrely. Uh, as Kevin says, you know, I created a little boba, so I'm talking to boba uh, here. And so he's my Wilson. Um, and, uh, but I, things that I look forward to have been, um, fun boxing Sundays, obviously with all of you, um, toying around Kev, being on the, the book of Boba Tea, uh, and hanging out with, with you and Yoko and Ernie have been like a tremendous, uh, boom for me. And then Yoko, uh, your Midnight 30 crew, staying up late to watch Book of Boba Fett and then jumping on that to chat with all of you. Uh, it really, 
yeah, it, it's th those those have been the constants in my week. And you know, the other night too, uh, you know, Steve and uh, my other buddy Ryan came over, and it was just like it's it was nice. We just played Alien the board game, which I highly recommend. That's a fantastic game, uh, and just. It was like three nerds just nerding out in the basement. So it was great, it was great. So these are the things that I learned to appreciate more and more that you take it, you take for granted. And so for all of you who are out there who are, who are living on your own, um, and, and like I, 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 I hear you, I can hear how, how it can be very, the solitude can be deafening, but um, you know, you have, if you have friends to reach out to and things that to, you can do, that you look forward to, yeah, that's awesome. And um, you know, when I when I read that people like Sundays and, and look forward to this, this that makes makes me, me it makes me feel good inside. <laughs> so thank you, thank you. Um, let's move on. Let's move on. Let's move on. Oh, I've been looking forward to this. I've been looking forward to this. Now. For those of you who know, uh, I'm a huge Ghostbusters fan as well. It's not just Star Wars, it's, it's Ghostbusters. And um, I did a reaction video to the trailer that was, uh, you know, released for this. Um, I, uh, I cried during that. Uh, I couldn't see the premiere of this because I was working uh, in LA and I promised to see it with my family. And so I had to wait and then I finally got to see it with my family. And I cry during that. I can't wait to see this again so I can cry during this. Um, and so, yeah, I had to. It's a no-brainer to get this, this box set. Uh, but before we keep going, Adam, Adam, Adam Bucci. I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly. Thank you so much. $10 super chat. That is so, so generous. Uh, G'day, mate, from Australia. Huge fan of yours. I love you and Kim's, and I love your uh, Star Wars. Sorry, I'm going to bring that back up because it disappeared. And I love uh, you were Star Wars now and a huge nerd like me. Keep up the good work. Pat Grogu on the head for me when you're on set next. Cheers. Thank you very much, Adam. I really, really appreciate that. Thank you so much for your support for this channel. I hope, uh, I'm glad you're enjoying all that work. I appreciate that so much. Uh, and I appreciate... I appreciate this too, um, and we're gonna find out. We're gonna find out. I'm, I'm curious to see if there are actual. Uh, if if I won the lottery and I got the full set, un unblemished, or if something's missing. So let's take a look at it. Here we go. And I know we got some ghost heads in in the chats tonight. Kenny C3. I know you are a huge. You, this is my brother from the New Jersey Ghostbusters who sent. A lovely care package, not only to me, but to Andrew Fung, who is himself a huge ghost head. So, uh, hey, and then, and then there's Gary uh, out there too, Gary, Gary Lau, who is another Ghostbuster uh, ghost head. Um, Steve participated with them as well in a Ghostbusters shoot. Uh, I think BC DeLorean and other movie cars uh, as well. Uh, is that you, Brendan? If that's you, then yeah, you got you got the Ecto One. So let's let's take a look and see what we got here. So this just came out. It was released, uh, I believe, February first. Um, this is the ultimate collection here. It is made to look like a ghost trap. That's the first thing here. So uh, let's open this up now. This one I got from Amazon. I had also pre-ordered from Best Buy, Canada. And uh, I realized, oh my god, I'm not going to be home and I want to unbox it. So, oh, surprise, surprise! I had, to, uh, I had to order another one. So, I got two of these. But it's okay, it's okay Anna. It's okay. Because the resale value on, on, on the unopened one is going to be, like, through the roof. Because I think they're out of stock. And as we all know, if something's out of stock, the resale value goes up. Take a drink, everyone. Take a drink. There you go, Ray. Ray said it in the, right here. Blue Dragon, Ray. I wanted, uh, I wanted the set. Let's move this up here. I wanted the set, but it's like three hundred fifty-nine dollars on Amazon. That's what, that's what I'm talking about, baby. This was now this was more expensive than uh, it was more expensive than the Best Buy had it on presale for ninety-nine dollars. Amazon had it for like one hundred fifty dollars, but then they had to price match it. So I actually got this for 99 so there you go. 
Um, here it is. Here's the case itself. I'm just gonna go back to this because I gotta lean in. Uh, it has, like a lot of the Blu-ray discs, it's got this back covering. Uh, it's a, ooh, it's, it's glued. It's hot glued on to this plastic sleeve. This sleeve lifts off, which is great, but you can see, can you see it? The two big gigantic honking globs of, of hot glue and you should be able to just pull it off but it's creasing it's it's there's so much of it it's actually creasing the plastic and I don't want it to wreck the plastic so I'll pick at that later but as you can see here it's got the no ghost logo it looks like proton streams coming from it and it's pretty that that's a pretty slip case uh, ghost trap that's pretty cool it's got the uh, on off switch indicator lights this should be an LED bar that that goes you've got the metal bars on the side the knobs the bottom has the wheels which is great the other knobs uh, on top and uh, of course on the other side you've got the vector plate uh, with a uh, oh my god it's a it's a resistor it's a devil resistor and again, this is a, another type of knob uh, on the back, the danger uh, sticker, and this is the port where the, you plug in the pedal. And yeah, pretty sweet. Now, this looks, I, my guess is this kind of, to open it, there you go. You slide it and that opens it right up. Oh, that's, they've got a little protective piece of cardboard right there. For this, that's distracting. <clears throat> here we go. We've got oops. Making of Ghostbusters. This is the uh, the reprint of that book in miniature form. Oh, it's heavy. This is heavy and it's pretty. Right. It's got the screenplay by Dan Aykroyd and Harold Ramis. The complete shooting script, fully annotated by the director, producers, and writers, illustrated with more than 200 besides behind the scenes photographs and drawings. So this is a miniaturized version of, there's, there's a bigger version, this is a reprint, but look at those BTS photos and the notes with the script. Oh yeah, that's pretty sweet. Pretty sweet, Bill House, pretty sweet. Got that right there. We also have a special features diskette. Uh, it's a special book, bookcase right there. Special features disc one and disc two. These will be a hoot to look at just because there's a ton of new content on there, which is very, uh, that's cool. It's not just like, uh, we'll just repackage it and put it in a fancy box and like that's it and have the same old special features that have been on all the discs. This is all new content, which I love. And I love the design on this, the proton packs, the Neutrona ones, the stylized ghosts. It's just, this is, this is great. That looks fantastic. And uh, you have whoop, digital codes, Ghostbusters, Ghostbusters 2, eh. I'm gonna do that so none of y'all screen cap and steal my downloads, jerks. Uh, so there's that. And <laughs> it's got Ghostbusters uh, 1, 2, after the uh, answer the call, and an afterlife. So they have afterlife at the end there. So there's that. Uh, Kenny C, that's right. You said that you are in that first disc. You're on uh, one of the behind the scenes. Uh, footage for that. So that's cool. I'm looking forward to, to seeing that. Uh, yeah, I know it's a little bit too late. Oh, well. I'm a physical collector anyway, so. Uh, here we go. And we got... Oh, look at that! It lit up! That's dope. <laughs> it's got green light on the inside. That'll switch off on its own, I bet. At some, I bet it's timed. It's a timer. Whee! So I'm, I'm, yep, it just switched off. Oh, there's a. So I'm, I'm lucky because uh, here we have Afterlife, Ghostbusters 2, and Ghostbusters. And some of the, um, what I've seen online pictures, complaints have been Ghostbusters Afterlife 
did not have the slip case. And I'll show you. Slip cases basically. Now there are some people who like they love slip cases. They need slip cases. And all it is is a protective case for the protective case. <laughs> right? So I, I am not sort of crazy about that. Like it doesn't bother me as much, but I am glad because I am OCD enough that it would bother me because people are getting it like this. With slip case, slip case, no slip case. And that would bug me. So I'm glad that I got that. Uh, one thing that I am noticing right off the bat here with these three, Ghostbusters, Ghostbusters 2, and Afterlife, is Ghostbusters, the first one, you can see it's shiny, right? Red circle, which is great. Ghostbusters 2, with the ghost with the two. Ghostbusters Afterlife, if you look at it closely, there's rivets. And it's the, the no ghost thing is, it's, it's, it's not 100, like it's, it's rusted, it's weathered, it's old, which falls in line perfectly with the movie. So that's a nice little touch with the slipcase art. Uh, I think that's brilliant. I think that's fantastic. Nice touch. And so here it is. You've got the Blu-ray version of it and the 4K version of it. I cannot wait to stick this into my 4K player and watch it in all its glory. So there's that. Ghostbusters 2. There it is. This is a different cover. That's great. Open it up. Ghostbusters 2. Blu-ray and 4K. And these are so glossy, my fingerprints are actually showing up on the cases. And Ghostbusters, now let's see if I get... Here's the other thing that I've heard is that the Ghostbusters 4K disc has been missing. Nope, I got it. All right, so I got the full set, which is great. And uh, on that note, everyone, finish your drinks because I gotta go to the bathroom. I'm back. Sorry, I got uh, <laughs> I got I got excited. So I, I, whenever I get I'm not, I'm not, I'm of that age now. If I get excited, I gotta pee. So I'm sorry. <laughs> Anyways, um, this is a beautiful box set, uh, the quintessential box set. I think uh, yes, it does not have uh, answer the call in the physical form on there, but I have answered the call. Uh, in 4K anyways, I enjoyed Answer the Call. I didn't mind that. So, but this seems in terms of a legacy, in terms of the same, uh, not only universe, but timeline, this makes more sense to be in it. Um, just because it's the, the aesthetic is the same, the timeline, the characters, all that's linked in. Uh, Answer the Call was a separate movie, like a reboot, as it were. And it is, I don't know if it's, it's kind of like the multiverse, Spider-Man multiverse or, or uh, and, and whatnot. It's just, it's in that universe, but it's not of this timeline. So that's, that is a thing that's really, uh, um, I, I didn't, like, I understand that the gripe behind it, but it, it is included on the digital codes that somebody has already screen capped and copying themselves right now. Um, but, uh, I like this in terms of, uh, I can't, I can't articulate. It's just the world that it's in right now. It just fits. This fits, this aesthetic, this everything. Uh, we have Super Chat, thank you, from BC DeLorean and other cars, uh, $7. The Afterlife cover, Afterlife cover features the Empress Theater in Fort McLeod, Alberta, where we got to take our Ecto to be on display for the Canadian premiere. That is you, Brandon. It is you. Very cool. Um, that's really cool. I'm gonna take, let's take a look at that. And yeah, see if you can see it right there. 
the Empress Movie Theater. Very cool. Love it. Fort McLeod, Alberta. That's amazing. That is amazing. Thank you for that video trivia. <laughs> it is. It is. Yay. That's why I, I didn't want to assume. Uh, I was like, it's got to be. It's got to be you. But I, I didn't want to assume. And, and uh, I'm, I'm glad you confirmed that. Hey, welcome, Brandon. It's good to see you again. I'm, hoping, I'm, I'm glad you're well. I'm glad you're well, too. Um, and uh, yeah, Kenny, uh, as well in the first disc, uh, for the, um, I think for, for some of the special features too, or are you in uh, the behind the scenes features for uh, Afterlife for a lot of the premieres? I mean, that really was a celebration. I mean, Ghostbusters uh, coming back so long after Ghostbusters 2. Um, I mean, people got really, I got excited for it. And so, it was it was very it was good to see it. It was good to see it. And again, that is no slight for me against um, Answer the Call. I liked Answer the Call. In fact, what, just before we started Kim's Convenience, shooting Kim's Convenience season one, the cast got together and we watched Ghostbusters Answer the Call at the movie theaters. That was the movie that we first saw as a cast. And I enjoyed it immensely. So that movie will always have a special spot in my heart um, and so uh, th it is you know there's no slight against it when I you know I, I don't mean to to disparage it in any way whatsoever but I'm digging this box set if you can get it I'd recommend it this this is a cool I, I love how clever this kit is this box set is so all right there we go oh I didn't finish my drink I guess I should get a new one. I guess I should get a new one. And I wanna pick, I wanna pick at this. You know, Cause I don't like these, I don't like the, I usually pitch them off and it's like recycling, going to recycling. But this is, this is, I put a lot of glue on it. Gonna be picking some glue tonight. That's a paddling. That is a, that is a paddling. No, you're wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong, Ray. You're wrong. We saw Ghostbusters. Uh, we started shooting in 20, we, we went to camera for Kim's Convenience in 2016. I remember, I remember. Don't do it, I did it. I did. I have to check my, I did check the discs. They're all okay. They're labeled okay. All the discs are labeled okay. So it's good. It's not like I didn't get two copies of the, uh, of, you know what though? I already have GB1 and GB2 in 4K. I already have them in 4K. Uh, Cause actually Gary, Gary Lau got me the, um, the Steelbook editions of the 4K. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty pumped about that. So like, I mean, I guess you should get what you paid for, right? <laughs> so, but uh, I, they look okay. I will check it out when I get home, the actual like to see, but from what I've heard, it's not that they were mislabeled, it's that they were just, you got like a GB2 in the GB1 case. You know what I mean? And like in GB2, you got GB2. So that's, that's what I've seen online at least. And so that's, I think we'll be okay. I think we'll be okay. Oh, look at that. Okay, well, this is interesting. In Hong Kong, the release of that uh, Ghostbusters box set does not include the digital code, so GB2016 is not in it at all. Eep. Whoops. Oh, well. There you go. Oh, Jay's asking, what is up with my lights today? I got these. You're late, Jay. You're late, but I got these Govi lights that do a little... Flishity flashity, it's a little bit a little bit flashier to distract from the boring background that I have. So a little bit of razzle dazzle there, my friend. Just a little bit. Okay, here we go. I think you've all been waiting for this. I know I have excitedly so. This is the next from next level. The Batman and the Batmobile 118 scale. Uh, this car looks like a beast. 
it's got I mean it's impressive it's really impressive I'm not generally a DC fan to be honest I'm not a huge Batman fan um, I mean don't get me wrong I like the Batman I just don't go nuts over the Batman uh, I did enjoy very much so the Christopher Nolan Batman trilogy Dark Knight trilogy I thought that was great um, Ben Affleck's Batman I didn't hate it the the whole uh, Justice League, Snyder Cut, I, I couldn't get into the hype for it. I didn't really, didn't register, didn't care uh, as much about it. But, I mean, and admittedly, I'm not a huge Batman fan, so it is it is what it is. But um, this, uh, watching the trailer that just got released a few days ago, uh, yeah, I'm cool. I'm, I'm, I'm down to see, I mean, I got chills. I, I got chills. And so I'm down to see what they do with it. Although it's like, I'm kind of... It's interesting because it's like the dark, gritty Batman all the time, right? And it's just like, how often can you go to the well with somebody who's dark and, and, and brooding like that? Why do you keep looking at me? No, no reason, little boba. I'm just, you know, wondering when enough is enough. It's a story about redemption. Yeah, it is. But I'll bet you the Batman's actually in his own movie. Whoops. You cut me. You cut me deep. And that's what happens when you try to do a little bit too much fun. You have technical glitches because nothing can be easy. Take a drink, everybody. Uh, okay, this is from Jada. Next level. I am super impressed with this, uh, this, this set here. It's way bigger than I thought it was going to be. Uh, uh, Jada approached uh, my agents about this and said, Hey, would Paul be interested in doing an unboxing? Uh, these are on pre-order right now. The movie's coming out in March. Go to thenextlevel.com. Uh, actually, the link is in is in the description below. Check it out. Uh, it this is in person. It's great. You can see the Batman there. Uh, I'm sure there's plenty of spoilers to be had just by looking at this. Uh, so if you don't want to be have the movie spoiled for you, then look away. <laughs> so here we go. We got. Um, Lots of windows, so you could see into the car. It's a, it's a modified muscle car. It looks like I don't know cars as well. It looks like a, is it a Shelby Cobra? Is it a Mustang? Uh, it looks it's an American muscle car. That's for sure. Um, Batman and the Batmobile. It's got lights on it. There these things that, that I think the hood flips up. Spoilers! 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 Yeah, look at that. Um, this is not suitable for children under 36 months. Small parts, choking hazard. The packaging must be removed since it contains important information. Must be retained, sorry. Uh, the packaging must be retained since it contains important information. So there you go, important information. And Uh-oh. On the bottom, right here it says, remove all screws from each mount with a screwdriver. Not your fingers, not your mouth, not this time. Uh, so let's let's open the sucker up. It, I think it already has batteries in it, Melissa. I think it already has batteries in it. Yeah, I'm gonna open that up. Now this box came. It was a bit dinged up. It was dinged up. I'm not gonna lie. It was dinged up. Uh, but since it was free. I'm not going to complain, not one bit. Oops. Oh, wow. That's cool. That's cool. So uh, the corners, this is hard plastic. Try me, try me. I'll try you. Uh, so yeah, this is this is all, I mean, this is all plastic right here. This, it, it's like a little mini sort of garage, which is cool or a lift. Uh, on the bottom, there are many, many screws. Well, many, there's six screws. That the Batman, the Batman is screwed in. So luckily I have, 
a screwdriver. This is a purchase that I had to make while living in lovely Vancouver. Um, I realized I, I'm, I'm gonna need some tools, so here we go. I'm going to, oh my God, can I see that? I'm, I, need, I need my special glasses and I need my special light. <clears throat> see, these are important, they help me see. Yeah, they screwed the Batman to the, to the, and that's, you know, sadly that's because people like to open up packaging and steal stuff from the packaging. Um, you know, they did that. Oh, damn. There you go. Why are you not? Seriously? There we go. And there is the Batman removed from there. He's heavy. This is a, uh, he's die cast, he's metal too. He does not, his arms are rubber, but they're not posable. Uh, the head, <clears throat> the cape is rubberized. You go, but the body is metal. It's a die cast metal body. And here's a detailed look at his armor, which is spoilers. Looks like he's got some, he's got a holster. He's got a gun, like a bat. Sorry, he's got a bat, bat gun. Might be a grappling hook, but it looks like a pistol. Could be a taser. Uh, details on his utility belt. Pretty interesting. Lots of body armor. Looks like he's got arrows on his gauntlet. Both sides. Hmm. Wonder what those are. Head does not move, it is attached. So this is, yeah, I don't think he goes into the Batmobile. He's just one of those guys that does this thing. <laughs> Whistling birds. Shut up, Tommy. Shut up. Take a drink, everyone. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Tommy. Shut up. Uh, okay, now let's, let's get to the Batmobile. Jingle bells, Batman smells, Robin laid an egg. The Batmobile lost his wheel, Joker got away. Hey! Oh wow. Uh, these are some long screws. This is shades of the, um, the Austin Martin from the uh, No Time to Die box set. And uh, I was thinking suspicion more and more that it's probably a Jada, although it's not on their website, so maybe it's not. We couldn't, we never did see, or we never could find out who the maker of that, the Austin Martin was, but I think it's, was it the same scale? I think it was very close. Maybe a smaller scale than this, because this is 1 18th and it's it's pretty substantial. Okay, I gotta switch this off. Oh wow, and there's even there are more screws on top of the screws. So I'm get here we go. Another layer of security, and there's an on-off switch here. Uh, this is heavy. Ooh, I see, I see some lights. I saw some lights, I saw some lights. Oh, there's a, look at that. So when the door touches, there's a contact point here. So that's very interesting, okay. Hopefully I can get to these screws. Okay, there you go. Cause that would suck. Not being like, cause these are pretty deep holes. 
you know, if, I, if my screwdriver couldn't reach down there, if the head couldn't reach down there to unscrew it, that would be frustrating. It's like getting a toy that requires batteries, and you realize that you don't have the batteries for it, so you can't really play with it. You won't see its false, false effect. You leave me, Tom, 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 Tom. Good night. Thanks for joining us. You're going to Daniel? All right, be that way. Fine. Well, that one's not. Brian's asking, do I have any 1-6 scale Hot Toys vehicles? I know they made some Batmobiles and that a Jedi fighter is coming out. Uh, no, I have not. Did not. These are not coming out. Why are these not coming out? Uh, no. Uh, they're, they'd be huge. I mean, I have, the, the 1-6 scale uh, speeder bikes are big enough, are, are so big. That, that's the only real vehicle that I have. Oh my god, these ones aren't... What's wrong? Why is this not... It's not engaging with the screws. They haven't turned at all. Is it even reaching down there, you piece of shit? Come on. Fuck. What the hell? Sorry, take a drink. This is, oh my God, fuck, really? Do I need to get an extender for this? This is bonkers. Get on there, get in there. Come on. It's not turning at all. It's not, did I strip it? No, I didn't strip it. How could I have stripped it? Okay, well this is uh <clears throat> this is interesting. I don't have a hacksaw. This is fucking strange. Oh my God. I'm doing, this is, just gonna try to buy a couple more inches or like a millimeter. 
for my, uh, I'll try this at home, kids. There we go. Wow, that sucked. Okay, so I had to, for whatever reason, these posts here that I'm screwing, they're just a, like a millimeter too, too tall or taller than the other ones. So the break in my screwdriver, like this part here couldn't, f oh fuck. This part here wouldn't fit in. So I had to gouge a hole scrape a hole around this post here so that it could fit in more to engage the screw. The first two were fine. As you can see, the first two I had no problem, but I actually had to take this, take, I'm taking this and I'm cutting, just shaving a little bit of this out so that the screw can reach in further. Uh, of course, if I was at home, it wouldn't have mattered because I just would have gotten a different screwdriver with a longer, longer head to it, but. That's okay, you know what, because I don't, this is just, there, there we go, see? Just needed to be able to fit in there to, to engage the screw. Just, yeah, add that to the list of more nemeses, right? God. God, what a piece of shit. Fucking piece of... Fucking screws. Like, honestly, fuck. Nothing can be easy, right? Fucking look at that. What the hell was that? All right. It's off. Woo! That was... That was... Uh, that was a pain in the ass. That was a pain. And I'm just glad there wasn't some impatient kid going, I want my toy, I want my toy, I want my toy. Uh, yeah, I was wondering, because I'm just, it's, it, I tried to unscrew it and nothing was different except these back two posts were just too tall. So, uh, and again, it's not a problem if you have like a, and at home I do, I have more than one screwdriver and I would have been able to just get one with a longer neck on it. But this one is, ugh. This is gorgeous though. This is, uh, check it out. Look at that. It's got, let me just remove this plastic here. There. Was I swearing? Was, <laughs> was I swearing on that? Maybe I was. I wasn't even. I wasn't even aware of it. I wasn't even aware of it. Oh boy. Kids ruin everything. CTV. Don't be sorry. That's a great show. Uh, my friend Kurt Smeed, Smeaton. Uh, that's his show. He wrote it. He wrote on Kim's. He's written on. He's a fantastic writer and human being. I'm so happy for his success. Uh, it's got a switch here, on, off, and try me. We're gonna. Switch it on. It takes three uh, watch batteries there, probably LR44s. What does that say? These, these are, there are already batteries in there. It does light up. This is, they are, yeah, LR44 or AG13 batteries. So we have here, see the light is engaged on it, lights up from the inside. Ooh. Oh, look at that engine. Look at that back engine. It lights up. Somebody's scoring points off of me. What's going on here? Looking sailor, gorgeous, definitely modernized bottom. Haha. <laughs> it's somebody tell me I'm popular. Got a big, big, big tipsy. Robert, you want to know the drinking game rules? Basically, if I swear, you take a drink. If I say nothing can be easy, you take a drink. Probably just, just keep drinking. 
right now. Uh, <laughs> look at that. That's pretty sweet. And this, this is a, I mean, look at that. It's all engine at the back. Lights at the front. What do you say, Brandon? You guys gonna be looking for another car? It's a, uh, so there, there are some plastic parts. The underside, the undercarriage is plastic. Ooh, the tires are a rubber. Not a soft rubber, but they're rubber. It's not a hard plastic. So, uh, these are, these are plastics, but the body, the, the main body of the car, uh, it, this is metal. It's metal. Um, this is a harder plastic, the engine back here. You can see this is a, this is a muscle car through and through. Uh, I think I saw, ooh, the hood raises up. This part raises up, it seems. You know what? Hold on a second. I'm being a fool. You know why? Because instructions. Take a drink, everybody. Ha 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 ha. No, wait a minute. There should be another thing. If I go, if I crow about instructions and the instructions don't really instruct, uh, I gotta finish a drink. Here you go. Well, that's all it is. It's basically with the bottom of the vehicle, that's where the batteries are. And uh, that's it. All right. Mm, time for me to start drinking. Um, whoa. Let's get this out of the way here. Let's take a proper look at this. It is a die cast metal body. Uh, the door opens. What's cool is, I don't know if you can see this, there is a roll cage. Come on. Roll cage inside the car, like uh, one of those stunt cars. Um, the other door open? Does the other door? The other door does open. And it's got a roll cage there too. Uh, there is, there's no passenger seat though. There is no passenger seat. It's a, an open space for storage. So somebody could sit there, they would just not get, uh, they would not uh, have a seatbelt, it seems. And it's all, yeah, the rest of the car is all engine. So there's room for the Batman. There's room for maybe his bag here, but that's it. Uh, the hood does open up. Nothing else comes off though. But this is, and I use the, the term hood lightly, like this, this part raises up. And I'm curious to see what that's all about, which is really cool. Rolls very well. Yeah. Ooh. So I'm trying to figure out what, there you go. The bonnet. This is, yes, a uh, single songwriter. This is supposed to be the bat, no, it's, it, this is the, uh, this is the Batmobile for the newest Batman movie that's going to be released in theaters in March, this March. This was sent to me by Next Level, uh, Jada. They, they're a spectacular line, toy line that specializes in die cast metal cars. Um, they do, and vehicles as well, not just cars, but movie vehicles. Uh, this is the 118th scale. Matt Reeves directed version of the Batman with Robert Pattinson as the Batman. And it comes, here you go, he have the Batman. He does not, I mean, I could try to put him in the car, but he doesn't bend. His legs don't bend. Uh, plus this roll cage, which would be, it's actually quite flexible. So you got to be careful. You got, you, you know, you don't let your five-year-old play with this. Miles, because it'll he'll break it, he'll break it, and uh, yeah, it's just looking at the dash, nice details in there. I don't see anything. It looks like he has a computer monitor on the dash, on the inside. I'm sorry, I can't get. 
there's a computer monitor there. So, but it looks like the Batman's car is mostly, uh, it's just this big, powerful, intimidating vehicle. Um, it looks almost armor plated, some of it, just some of the simplicity of the rivets, rivets but uh, this, is, this is built for like speed and intimidation. That's basically it. But this is this is a nice nice one. Does it have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto? I have no idea. But uh, it lights up. It hasn't lit up. Now it's not lit up now. Maybe it needs new batteries. That's it. Like you can see the, the segmented tail lights. Looks like it's got a big old turbo boost there. Big rocket engine. And uh, yeah, this this looks like a cross between uh, like a one of those old school Camaros, Colby uh, uh, Shelby Cobra, or even and it's got like I don't know hints of a, a Mustang. So. Yeah, you know what? The engine is completely unprotected. So if you were to shoot at it from above, sure. But that's the thing. If you're chasing it, I would imagine. But I don't think, I think Bat the Batman does more of the chasing than being chased. Right? Okay. Well, that was fun. Thanks. Thank you to Next Level for sending me that. Um, it's, that's a great, that's a really, really cool uh, one eight scale vehicle. Jada, as, again, the attention to detail is phenomenal. And that, that's, that's really, as a collector, that's what I love. I love seeing that, that de the little details, things that, you know, you don't gloss over, you just, uh, they bring to life. Uh, I've always been a huge fan of miniaturized vehicles. I collect Starships, Battlestar Galactica, um, you know, the, the starships from there, uh, the battle stars, the Cylon Raiders, the Colonial Vipers, in Star Trek, all the different starships, uh, space stations and whatnot. I have a real fascination for that. Um, and, uh, you know, there's, there's, you have heroes collectibles and they do the Eagle Moss and whatnot, but Jada has been there ever since too. And they have some really spectacular, uh, versions of the Ecto-1, the DeLorean time machine, um, and now they have Batmobile, which is great. So you can check it out, nextlevel.com, I believe. The link is in, the, is in my description below. These are on pre-order right now. You can pre-order them uh, just in time for the new Batman movie that's coming out in March. So, uh, yeah, that's great. Um, I'm going to be going home tomorrow night. That's Monday night, catching a red eye back home. Uh, and I'm coming back on the Sunday. So that means next Sunday there will not be a fun boxing Sunday. Sorry, but it's okay. There will be one the week after that. So we're really just missing the one fun boxing Sunday. Uh, but this week, this Wednesday, Book of Boba Fett, the huge finale for that. It's um, going to be uh, a big one, I think. Uh, if you're on the West Coast or if you're on the East Coast and you're up and you want to talk to somebody about it, check out Yoko McCann, her Midnight 30 crew on her channel Twitch, her Twitch channel, her channel Twitch, on her Twitch channel, it's uh, Living La Vida Yoko. She is, uh, she's a great, um, great source of information. I mean, she's smart. I, that's what I love about Yoko. She's super smart. Got some really, really keen insights on, on everything basically. And it's, yeah, so it's a fun, it's a really fun chat to be on too. Uh, I've been lucky enough to be on it a couple times. Uh, as as a participant, not not on it, but like, anyways, I've been part. It's fun. It's good. Just watch it. Just watch it. It's good. Um, wow. Now this is how this is how Kevin feels. I get it. I get it, Kevin. And I'm sorry. I'm too harsh on you. We had a super chat from Robert Donatello. Twenty dollars. Wow. Thanks, Robert. I just saw your Vancouver collectibles haul on Instagram. Damn. I think you're gonna need to dig another basement level. Here's a drop in a bucket for that project. Thank you so much, Robert. Thank you. I <laughs> appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah, check out my Instagram. I, I did a reel, um, had a lot of fun with it. I, I'm bringing stuff home with me 
uh, on the visit, so just putting some collectibles in there and others as it's it's a big it's a lot, but I'm not all bringing it all home at once. Uh, as I unbox things uh, when I'm here, I'm going to be shipping them back home. So uh, that's an Anna problem. Just kidding, baby. Just just kidding. Um, <laughs> But uh, thank you so much, Robert. You are so generous all the time, and I really, really appreciate that. Um, you, you make me smile. You make me smile, and the world needs more people like you. So thank you for your generosity, and thank you for always following uh, and, and being awesome. Um, we have uh, a super chat from, from BC DeLorean. Brandon, thank you. Uh, $7. Uh, can't wait to have you come visit the garage when you get back, and you can unbox some one-to-one -one scale movie vehicles. Yes! Yes, for those of you who don't know, take a drink. Uh, Brandon, he's behind the BC DeLorean and other movie cars. It's a family-run business. They have a, like, I think 20 vehicles, 20 movie vehicles. Um, Gary and Steve, uh, from the sh uh, they're in the chat. Uh, they ha recently had a, a photo shoot with the Ecto-1 uh, that Brandon's family has that's made the appearances in Afterlife and that he's talking about uh, for the for the for the screening, the theatrical premiere. And uh, yeah, I, I'd be like a kid in a candy store because I would love to see those vehicles. He also has a time machine um, from Back to the Future and like a whole whack of other vehicles that I'm, I'm, I'm dying to see. I know you had the, the Trans Am from Smokey and the Bandit. Um, and yeah, yeah, for sure. Let's do it, let's do it up. Um, and uh, yeah, he says right here, 20, he's got, 20 more and always in the works. 20 and more are always in the works. And so I'm, I'm excited to see what your family has. And I'm very, I feel very, uh, I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to coming out and visiting and playing and just hanging out. That's great. Um, so yeah, so next Sunday, there is no fun boxing Sunday. Uh, I will be home. So my attention will be uh, devoted to the family because it's been over a month since I've seen them. And so, uh, it, it's it's family time for me, so I might be a little bit quiet during the week, uh, but I will be there for for uh, Book of Boba Tea Fridays on Kevin's uh, Kevin's channel, uh, toying around. Join Kevin, Yoko McCann, Ernie Villa, Villa, Villa the Fallen Fat Ernie. Sorry, man. I I read your name once and I can't remember what it is, but I love you, brother. I love you, Ernie. The Fallen Fat. Uh, he has really fast become such a great uh, addition to that panel of super nerds uh, when we talk about movies, especially Star Wars. And so I, I, I love hanging out with him. Uh, we got a super chat from Christopher Colvin, my friend, droid builder extraordinaire. Check out his Instagram page if you want to be inspired on droid building and 3D printing. He's, he's amazing. He's got one. $5. Thank you so much. Thanks for your ongoing positivity. Um... Uh, you're making a difference in this crazy world. Uh, thanks, thanks. I, I don't think I'm doing much. It's, it's more people like you, more people like you, Christopher. So, uh, I'm just, I'm just the one who's, who's, we're just nerding out together, and I love that. So, <laughs> thank you so much. Um, and uh, yeah, so next, uh, next Friday, toying around, book of boba tea, 9 p.m. Eastern. 6 p.m. Pacific time. There's going to be a lot to talk about. Finale for Book of Boba Fett. Will it live up to the hype? The last two episodes have been building and building and building. I am hopeful. I'm looking forward to it. There will be no fun boxing Sundays next Sunday. But hey, it's the Super Bowl anyway. You got to check out that halftime show. You got to check out that halftime show. If you are a kid or if you listen to music in the 90s hardcore... That is gonna be your jam. I'm more excited about that, honestly, than the actual Super Bowl itself. Cause who knows what could happen. It could be a blowout, it could be really boring, but uh, um, yeah, there is, there is uh, that. So, hey, why compete against the Super Bowl when you can watch the halftime show? That'll be fun. But the Sunday afterwards, I will be back for Fun Boxing Sundays, episode 32, with all of you lovely nerds and geeks out there. Thank you so much for joining me today, um, as always. Uh, <laughs> sorry, Ernie, just piped in Villarreal. Villarreal or Villarreal? Villa that was French. Good Lord. Villarreal. Ernie Villarreal. 
Ernie, Bernie Sarlacc. <laughs> Sorry. Oh man, I love you so much. Thank you so much, Ernie. You're a good man. You're a good man. And I'm really glad I met you. Um, yeah, so check it out. Uh, for everybody out there during the week, hey, stay safe. Stay safe. Uh, you know, it's, it's getting here. It's, it's like darkest before the light, it seems. But it seems like we're getting through this. So stay safe, everybody. Uh, stay geeky. Stay frosty. Be kind to each other. Be kind to yourselves. Uh, remember, um, you're important. You matter. And uh, I love having you around. So let's, let's hang out again in a couple of weeks. Uh, in the meantime, yeah, check out Yoko's live stream. Check out uh, Book of Boba Tea on Friday. And until then, uh, we, will, we will, yeah, geek out together. Okay, have a good night. You never say goodbye to me, Paul. It really hurts my feelings. Anyways, he's gone, so finally I can talk. Here are some spoilers for the seventh episode of the book of Boba Fett. Stop. Just stop. You don't know what's going to happen. You're not even involved. You're like a one-six scale figure that I dug out and talked to far too much. Yeah, but you need me. Yeah, I do. I love you, little Boba. I love you too, Paul. Have a good night. Nope.